Hallelujah. We're greatly we on with the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to the Word of God, we are going to stand up at this moment in the Old Testament, book of Job. Job chapter 34. Job 34. We're going to read the verses 23 and 24. Job 23. 33 Okay. Okay. Se com ele, pois houver um mensageiro, um intérprete, um entre milhares, para declarar ao homem a sua retidão. Então terá misericórdia dele e lhe dirá, livra-o para que não desça a corva, já, já, se, já achei resgate. Louvado seja o nome do Senhor. Te adoramos a Deus. Lord, we praise you and glorify you because one day you laid a, your hands upon us. You, you took us out of the place where we were, the pit of mud of sin, and brought us into your presence. Lord, your word says that from dust you rise the humble and to cause him to sit down as a prince amongst his people. This is the wonderful King that has done this to our lives, rescued us, saved us, and brought us into His presence, and has prepared for each one of us a new heaven, a new earth, and an eternity. Blessed be the name of the Lord for all those things. We ask, Lord, that in Your Word You may be operating and acting to our, our benefit, to the salvation of the ones to have a project to do in their lives. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The book of Job said that Job was a servant of God. And the testimony was this. The servant was righteous. He was sincere. He was righteous. He feared the Lord. And he would go astray from evil. But what is interesting of, about all of this is that Job, he did not know God. So we can say, God, Job know God from hearing about. And at the end of the book, Job himself says, before I knew you from hearing about, but now my eyes can see you. Salvation is through faith. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. He believed, and he was able to contemplate the face of his Savior and his God. God himself gave us testimony of Job. It's interesting that sometimes we receive visions, revelations. And the Lord said, there is here a family of servants. There's a servant, a, a, a brother and a sister. They have trials and they have tribulations. And they need to live an experience, a greater, ex another experience with the Lord. But for God, they are already servants. They are already people that in God's project, they are already part of his eternity and there was a meeting in heaven they presented to God the children of God also the enemy of our souls appeared there and the Lord said where are you coming from and he said I came from wandering around the earth and you know what God asked him have you seen my servant Job 
How many of us can think, can think about this experience that God would look from heaven and the enemy there and God asking to the devil, have you seen my servant Wayne, my servant Benjamin? What a privilege, what an honor for it to have a witness from God because it, my testimony about myself is a false testimony. Me boasting about myself is worthless, but when God give a testimony of myself, testimony about you, my brother and sister, then it's different. And the word also says that Job, he was going through a trial, a difficulty. We all know the story of Job. In chapter 33, there's a man that shows up, Eliu, and it says the following, Job, the Spirit of God made me. And the inspiration of the Almighty gave me life. So he uses Genesis chapter 2 when it says that that God formed the man from the dust of the earth and blew through his nostrils the breath of life and man became living soul. All of us, all the ones who are, have been born and the ones who died from the first man, from Adam to this day, they have been like this. God forms man and blows onto man the breath of life and then he becomes a living soul showing that every man they are all equal that's why God shows no partiality this is a privilege but also the same individual he says the following I came from God like you I came from God, you came from God, you, 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 all of you came from God. That's why God is, is called the Creator. But he says the following, from, from the mud I was formed, we all, we all came from God, but also we all came from mud. We all have sinned and have been destitute from, from, from life. But the wage of sin is death. But the free gift of God is salvation in Christ Jesus. doesn't matter if you have green, blue, red eyes. or It matter, doesn't matter the color of your hair, your, your skin, your bank account, you, how, how far you went in school your NBA, your high degree, it's important, it's part of your life, but for God, it doesn't matter. If I'm an American, if I'm Spanish, if I'm German, if I'm from Angola, if I'm Haitian, if I'm Chinese or Japanese, it doesn't matter. For God, it doesn't matter. So is so. Has no nationality. Has no privilege. And also has no restriction. We are all equal before God. And God is show, show no partiality amongst people. The desire of God is that all be saved in the knowledge of truth. So Elio says the things. He says, hey, you're important to God because you came from God. But you're also from the dust of the earth just like me, right? That's it. There's no difference between you and I. And later on, he says the following. God speaks once and twice. However, no one pays attention to it. The children just sing a song who has an ear. Listen 
to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. When you go all the way to Revelations, in seven letters, there is the same recommendation. Was a mere listen to what the Spirit is telling to the church. And he, the individual, the servant, he says the following, God speaks to man once and twice. He speaks to the Father, to the Son, and also to the Holy Spirit. And here, it sh he tells how God speaks. He speaks through dreams and vision at night when you go through a deep sleep of a man when they sleep on their beds. But there's a song that says, he speak to, through a child, through a song of praise. God spoke to men through angels in the past. God spoke to men personally. God also spoke through men, to men through visions, through dreams. God sp spoke to men through an animal. The prophet felt like he was so important that God said, you're worse than an animal. Sometimes we think we are so important, right? God used a donkey to speak to a prophet. He showed to the prophet that he was more irrational than that animal because the prophet was going towards death and he was a donkey to deliver the prophet. Do you know why God does that? God, because God loves us. Because he wants to preserve our lives. In Hebrews, Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 1, Hebrews 1, verse 1, he's, he said in his last days, through the Son, so then he said the following. In the past it was like this. And now God is speaking through the Son. Who's the Son of God? Jesus. Therefore, so Jesus is speaking. So who has an ear, listen to what the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, is speaking to the church and why is he speaking that's what I'm saying it is written to take man away from his destination hide his pride from him to deviate him from the grave and from his life from going through the sword grave is death and sword is judgment so there is a judgment after death. First, there is a resurrection or the second death, which is eternal death. So God speaks through His Son. He speaks through dreams. He speaks through visions. He speaks through angels. He speaks through a praise. He speaks through a child. He speaks through an animal because He wants to deliver you from death and judgment in the same way that He has already delivered many from death and judgment. Why is that? Because many gave credence to the word of God. And here it says the following. And here the Lord says, if there is a messenger, a messenger for him. That's the text that we just read. So the Lord says that if there is a, a messenger with him. What is a messenger? A messenger is the one who delivers a message, one who delivers a mail. But the messenger, he doesn't speak of himself. The message is not hears. The message is of the one who has sent him. And Jesus, 
in John chapter 14, 26 says the following. He says, the Father sent me. So when Jesus is born, God sent a messenger, Angel Gabriel, that went to meet with the pastors that were protecting their sheep in the vigil of the night. He said, I bring to you news of great joy because today was born to you Christ the Savior. He brought a message of hope, a message of salvation. And the messenger of God, he came exactly to bring a message of hope. A message of salvation in the name of Jesus is exactly this salvation and if you believe in Jesus you will be saved all things have been made by him says the word and w without him nothing that was made was made and Jesus sent his only begotten son so whoever believes in him may not perish but may have a, an eternal life and this messenger, he brought this news of great joy, which was the birth of the Son of God. And many, many times people ask, what was the day of the birth of Jesus Christ? The day of the birth of the Son of God, for me, was in June. It was around the 23rd. The day of the birth of the Son of God may have taken place for you, my brother and sister, on the December 20th, the 20th or January 1st. Today, today may be the day of the birth of Jesus. Because if today Jesus is born in your life, He is born in your heart, you bring to you news of great joy. You bring hope for you to be one day with the Lord in eternity to experience a new heaven and a new earth. That's the day of your birth. Jesus comes to Nicodemus and says, it's necessary to be born again of the water and the, of the spirit. If, you, if there is a messenger with him, Jesus is the messenger of God. But you only bring a message of God it's difficult for many people to understand because many people think that it's just foolishness so it's necessary an interpreter one day you look of the queen of Kandas speaks of the about the acts of the apostles he he did not understand. He was reading the Bible, did not understand anything. So then the Lord sent an interpreter. Philip goes there, come close to that cart, and I can clarify to this man the project that I have for his life. So then he read the prophet of Isaiah, and it spoke clearly about Jesus. Because he, is Isaiah 53, he came as a renewal, as a root of a dry land. He had no beauty or appearance. The lamp that was silent to be killed. And I did not understand anything. Why is that? Because there was no interpreter for him. And when I speak with a brother who is an American, <laughs> I look for an interpreter. Isn't it true? Sometimes when I speak with, I have a conversation with him. And he knows little about Portuguese. I know nothing about English. So then there is a need for an interpreter. So the interpreter is the one who is going to make those two people to understand each other. What is happening, what is taking place. And so that they can understand that conversation. That's the role of the interpreter. Isn't it true? So in order for us to understand the things of God, the spiritual things, they need to be discerned 
spiritually. The latter kills, but the spirit brings life. So that is necessary the presence of the interpreter. Jesus once said to Nicodemus, once again we return to Nicodemus, he was speaking to him many things, and Nicodemus would not understand. He was a doctor of the law, a man that had profound knowledge of the law. So then Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, Nicodemus said, if I spoke to the things, it necessary to be born again. And he said, how come? I'm an old man. How can I go back to, into the womb of my mother? Jesus said, you need to be born of the water and the spirit. He did not understand. He did not understand. Why is that? Because for him, there was the absence of the interpreter. If I speak about the things of the earth, you don't understand. If I speak the things of heaven, they're going to go crazy. He did not understand anything. And many times, we don't understand. We hear the word of God. God speaks to us through dreams and visions and revelations. He speaks to a person, a child, a praise. But we don't understand. Why is that? Because it is necessary to have an interpreter. The interpreter of the message of God is the Holy Spirit of God. Jesus said, the Lord my Father sent me. And I sent to you the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. He is going to teach you all the things. And he's going to cause you to remember all of them. So it's necessary the presence of the Holy Spirit. This is the interpreter. And the Bible says one amongst thousands. Because in church we have many interpreters here. From Portuguese to English, English to Portuguese, and Spanish to Portuguese. There are many interpreters all over the world. And they are necessary. But the interpreter here is that he's speaking about is the Holy Spirit to open up your mind, my understanding, your understanding, so that you may know and comprehend the plan, the project that God has for our lives. And why is that? To declare to man his righteousness. There's a song that says, I will walk in the righteous path. When will the Lord come to me? I'm not going to lie and deceive. I will move forward. So the Holy Spirit declares man the place, the direction that he needs to walk. Who is Jesus is the path. He's the way. But without the Holy Spirit, it's impossible to walk on this path. There is a brother, the friend of Jesus. When Jesus spoke to, about this path, Je he asked Jesus, who is the path? My brother, you are me, with me for so long, for three years and a half. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And the Bible says, you will hear the voice uh, from behind you saying, my brother and sister, this is the way. Don't go astray from it to the left or to the right. Why is that? Because 1,000 will fall to your side and 10,000 to your right. But if you remain on the path, no evil is going to happen to you. So in order to declare man his, his righteousness, so in other words, to place man in a new living and living way. So you came here walking on a path, but now the Holy Spirit is going to place you in, into a, a new and living path. So that the Lord is going to have mercy on him. When man finds the way when man begins to walk on this path, the mercy of the Lord is upon his life. And what is mercy? It's to mercy is to have men of misery, man, take men away from judgment, take men away from death. The mercy of the Lord is the rise, the reason why we are not destroyed. And the Bible says, my brethren, that mercy of God has no end. It's mercies every morning. And we all are in need of the mercy of God. Because no man, even no matter how good he is, how 
Job was. He was a righteous man. He was fearing God. He never went astray from evil, but he needed God in his life in order to reach the project that God needed to do to his benefit. So, because of God's mercy, you say, and the Lord has a word for you, my brother and sister, especially. He's telling you that he's a project of deliverance. When God has mercy on man, God gives orders on our behalf in order to have us delivered. Salvation is deliverance. Deliver them so that may not go down to the grave. So the Lord wants to deliver us from death. Not this physical death because we are all going to die. If Jesus is not arrive soon uh, uh, everybody's going to die. Only the children are going to be left. Oh, I'm going to be one of the first here. But it's not of this physical death. It's of the eternal death. And the only one that can deliver you from eternal death is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because when he goes to the cross of Calvary, right? Condemns death. Death was defeated. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is the only one who has this power of delivering you from death and of eternal death. So that we may not go down to the grave. I have already found ransom. Uh, we can leave this place already saying, I have already found ransom. One day I was rescued. One day many people who are here, they have been rescued. And today is a day for you to say, today, I have found a ransom. But what is to be rescued? This week we have a uh, Hurricane Milton went out there, destroying everything. But it is interesting that there was uh, an article in the news that a man was 30 miles away from the beach. This man. So the helicopter went there and rescued him. So interesting that he could not be he could not rescue himself. You know, you know what? You don't you can't rescue yourself. Only there, there's always going to be someone else that is going to rescue you because you are in danger. You are, have a risk of life. In that case, a man went there and rescued him. But the Bible says that the rescue of the soul, the ransom for our souls. It's very high price. It was not paid with gold or precious stones, but it was with the precious blood of Jesus. You have been rescued. You have been paid a ransom through the blood of Jesus in order for you and I to be rescued and pay that ransom for us. It was necessary for Jesus to die on the cross of Calvary and shedding his blood and resurrect because if he did not resurrect, it would not be worth it. Because a dead man cannot do anything. Jesus died, but he also resurrected to prove that he has power over death. He has power to rescue yours, mine, and our souls. I have already found a ransom. So I have already found salvation. Somebody helped me. Somebody rescued me. It doesn't matter what the situation, physical, spiritual, emotional, and material that we may be going through. We may leave this place saying, Today I have been ransomed. Today I found a rescue. Today God came to save me. He came to deliver me. He came to heal me. He came to transform my life. He came to place me in a new and living path. I have already found ransom. But this ransom has a price. You have been kidnapped. You are now in the hands of the Criminals and now people are going to they are going to call to ask for uh, an amount of money in order to for for the ransom to be paid. That's not how it is. And Jesus paid a high price for your lives. And sometimes we don't give worth to this proper worth. 
if you don't give value to what you have, you you need to know that you are important to God. Sometimes you don't give enough importance to what what we mean to God. When then you think that you know to save me, Jesus has to die. He leaves his eternity. He left it, the splendor of his glory. I left a place where sometimes you give a lot of importance to gold, pearls, and precious stones, right? The Bible says that the holy land, the eternal land, the door is of pearls, the walls of the street are out of precious stones, the floor of the sea, the asphalt of the, the sea is made out of pure gold. And Jesus came down from his glory, from his eternity, to be, go come down here, to be beaten, to suffer, to be humiliated. You know why? To save you, to save me. Sometimes you say that salvation is free. It's not free. Salvation is not free. You have been saved by grace, but salvation is not free. Because it costed the life of the Son of God. Sometimes we don't give enough worth to this. Sometimes we exchange Jesus for anything. The disciple of Jesus, he thought that 30 coins of silver were more than his own salvation. A pastor said that, a pastor once told me that there are people that exchange Jesus for a bicycle because they don't give worth to, enough value to their own lives. If he loved himself, he would have noticed the great worth that he has for God. There's a price. Salvation speaks also, you know, about it is pain of death. You know what? Salvation is pain of death. It is written. Colossians chapter 12, verse 14. It was crossed as the bill that was against us and his ordinances in a way that was against us. He took it up from the, our midst and nailing it on a cross. There's a song that says a, a price, a high price was paid. There was a bill that was against us. My death before God was so great that it could not be paid. You know, and you know what God did? He picked up this bill and nailed it on the cross. That's why Jesus, when he's dying, he says, this did it you. He's, he spoke in Hebrew. <laughs> I, I don't know how much about Hebrew. I may not have spoken properly. But we know what that Hebrew word means. It is paid. It is finished. You don't need anything else. Neither to God or to man. Because God has already paid all your death. Because God loves you. And because God wants to save you. Amen.
Então o sonho se alterou, não mais o som feliz. Ouvia das osanas, dos coros infantis. O ar em torno se esfriou, do sol faltava luz. E num alto e tosco monte vi o fruto de uma cruz. E num alto e tosco monte vi o fruto de uma cruz. se mudou, surgia em resplendor, a divinal cidade, morada do Senhor, da lua não brilhava luz, nem sol nascia lá, mas só fugia a luz de Deus, muito pura em seu brilho e todos que queriam sim podiam logo entrar na muito feliz Jerusalém que nunca passa Glória a Jesus, aleluia. We said that that God, even read the text that God speaks through dreams and visions, and the Lord has shown a vision, a family, that God considered them His. But the Lord has shown that his family, that he considered them to be already his servants. God has shown that they have lacking limits. And if you see, my brethren, the, even the ocean has limits. The heaven has limits. The sun has its own limit. The moon has a limit. The day has a limit to rise up and go down. And a new day come up. Everything has a limit. So when God 
place two servants in the Garden of Eden, God also put limits there. You can do everything, but on this tree you cannot touch. That was their limit. The limit is for our protection. And when they thought that they can, could do anything, they disobeyed the Lord, and the consequence came. So there is an individual in the Bible, Simeon, and Solomon placed a limit in for Simeon. He said, "Don't pass the the, the river uh, Cedron." When he went out away, he passed on on the limit of Cedron. There was a conse consequence for him. The Lord is showing this family of servants, and if God considers them a servant. But we cannot go beyond the limits. It's not the limit of the Maranatha Christian Church or the pastor. That's worthless. You know that? It is worthless. It's not going to save you. It's not going to condem condemn you either. But this is the limit of the Holy Spirit. If you harm the Holy Spirit, there's going to be consequences for your life. And why is the Lord showing? Because the Lord considered them as servants. And the servant hears the voice of the, his Lord. Amen. So the Lord is showing this family that it was in this situation. The detail is the following. That they did not want to bow. They didn't want to bow. We don't need to bow before men. But we need to bow before God. Because the Bible says that every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus is the Lord. And tonight, family, may you do this. Bow your knees and confess to the Lord as your only and sufficient Savior. The Lord has shown that this family was away from the services. Everybody entered here, right? But there's another service happening. There's a service in, service in heaven. And the service in heaven happens when we enter, enter through the door, who is Jesus? In, but in order for us to enter through this door, who is Jesus, we need to recognize that He is the only God. It's not my own reason, my understanding, or my intellectuality, right? But it's for you to place before yourself, before the Lord, as a servant. Say, Lord, I'm a servant. I need a lesson of forgiveness. I need a Holy Spirit to guide my family. And if you believe in this, your family will be blessed. The Lord also show, shown, has shown a, a couple. And this couple, they are entering into a, a business. A business. Money, right? In America, the Bible, America everybody says money is money. <laughs> right? Might is money. Might is money. It doesn't matter where it's coming from. But for God, it matters. For God, it matters. The bank don't care. Any money that you put there, the bank accepts. But for God, it matters. The origin of this money. And the Lord was showing that this couple is entering to a, a business. I don't know if it is a partnership or a business. And this is going to be a good, bring a harm to their lives. Bring a great harm. A harm that can cause, can bring them to death, spiritual death. This is going to enter into such a difficulty that their, their faith is going to be destroyed. And the Lord is giving you an alert because He loves you, my brother and sister. So be careful. We have the habit of asking the Lord, Lord, sometimes I think that they seem to be too good. And my mother used to say, if the, the, the alms are too big, even the, the saint gets, con he feels like there is something wrong, you know. If, uh, if uh, a stab on the back from Brutus, 
if you don't pay attention to what you're doing and may harm your spiritual life. The Lord was also showing a man that had a dream and he was there was a boat and this boat was going away on a trip. It was departing and he missed this boat and there was no way for him to reschedule another trip and he was woke up flick, uh, affliction and this boat is the work of the Holy Spirit the brethren already sang here a song that speaks about eternity we are on the express we're going to great place of light and our passport is the Lord Jesus stamped with a visa the visa is the Holy Spirit right and there is only a one-way ticket and it's just once if you miss this trip if the rapture of the church comes and you left left behind you left for me it will be over right I'm not Jewish and for me it will be over there's no second opportunity right you either go on the first one or you don't go or either I go or I don't go or will I be saved or will I be left under judgment a sentence of death this is what the Lord is showing to you the Lord has a project for your life he wants to bring you to eternity but you need you can't miss the time I enter into God's time and now I live in eternity we need to be prepared I'm, you're not going to prepare tomorrow remember the story of the virgins the parable of the virgins they were not prepared and they they blinked and they missed it. that's how the Bible says the the coming of the Lord is going to be the blink of an eye the, and the Lord is alerting once again because God is a project of fraternity for love for your life God loves you you may not love yourself as much as God loves you but God loves you and the Lord also has shown another man that came here with the type of shoe that he usually usually wears in order to walk to walk in this world but the Lord was showing that he realized that he could not enter to the church with the same shoes when Moses he came into the presence of God God says something interesting to Moses Moses take off your shoes take the sandals off your feet because this place is a holy land and this man has this understanding he knows that this is a holy place not only because of those benches this place that looks like a shoebox no it's holy because the Lord is present present and for as long as God is present this place is holy if God is not present there's no sanctity without the presence of God do you understand but the project of God is so that you may not wear these shoes anymore but the Bible needs to be wearing the shoes of peace the shoe that we need to wear is the Word of God in order to walk on this new and living way guided by the Holy Spirit Amen I invite the church to stand up we're gonna have a glorification to the Lord I want to glorify your name for your word <coughs> for all the ones because your spirit came to your house the praise of salvation the praise because we're already living in uh, with uh, experiencing your glory I we'll praise you for your word as awoken us at this last hour. Praise you when I say that we love you, Lord. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, we praise you. We thank you for this moment of fellowship. In the service and adoration, we come to your presence uh, as a sweet offering to you. Bless your people so that they may have an experience with you. Protect everyone. Deliver us from any evil. Open it, 
Look for the door, necessary door and spiritual materials for the survival of your people and your church. We pray to your blessing, your assistant. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. You who are here with us, brother and sister, you heard the, the spiritual gifts, the word of God. If you desire an assistance, a clarification of what you heard and saw tonight, and for the church, we'd like to remind that we are on the week of consecration, fasting from zero to nine or from five until the end of the service. For the topic of the month, it's the month of dedication. And I wish you all the peace of the Lord Jesus. Our next service is going to be Tuesday at 8 p.m. We're going to have a study about the Sunday school.